Welcome, folks, to the study of Brother Jed Smock. I have been promising, and we started several days ago, a review of Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States. Now, contrast that with, with another book, which I just ordered, called A Patriot's History of the United States. By the way, I'm sorry that this will appear backwards on, on your screen. I don't know how to fix that on my phone. But uh, this might well be called A Marxist History of the United States. For Howard Zinn, the author of this textbook that is used in many of our high schools across the land and in, in, in college classes, about the history of the United States, admits he's somewhat of a Marxist, uh, something of a socialist, even something of an anarchist. Uh, he comes more from the point of view, I would say, of uh, Bernie Sanders, a more contemporary uh, example. Matter of fact, uh, like uh, Sanders, Zinn identifies himself as a democratic socialist. His book uh, opens, uh, well, first of all, the first chapter is called Columbus, the Indians, and Human Progress. This Patriot's History of the United States is subtitled From Columbus's Great Discovery to America's Age of Entitlement. Well, that's a downward spiral. We're in the age of entitlement now where uh, people are not independent men, ambitious men, adventurous men, brave men, heroic men like Columbus, but they're uh, getting entitlements. They think they uh, d deserve a, a living uh, that the government provide for all of their needs, for their food, their clothing, their shelter, yes, even their uh, health care. America has been turned into a nation of wimps by the socialist philosophy and point of view of Howard Zinn. When I studied American history and then later taught American history for five years at the a junior high, high school, and college level. I can even remember my elementary textbooks in American history. The first chapter was usually entitled The Age of Discovery. How much more interesting is the title The Age of Discovery from the title of Zen's first chapter, Columbus, the Indians, and Human progress. The age of discovery, at least the height of it, can be from the 1480s to 1521. Um, of course, it's what were the Europeans, especially the Spanish and the Portuguese, who dominated uh, uh, this age of discovery. Um, what were they trying to discover? They weren't trying to discover America. They weren't trying to discover a new world. They were trying to discover a trade route to the east uh, so that they would not have to go through the uh, uh, low, uh, uh, through, the, through the Mediterranean Sea. I just discovered I'm low on batteries. Excuse me, folks. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, new at the, using this uh, media, so you have to bear with me some. We hope we have enough battery left to uh, com complete uh, uh, this video. Uh, and so they were, uh, uh, it was a dangerous route. The Arabs, the Muslims controlled uh, largely the land route uh, to, to China, to the Indies, to the east, where they wanted uh, uh, all the riches of the East and bring them to Europe and um, the silk, uh, the spices and, uh, of, of the Far East is what the Europeans were interested in gaining. And of course, Columbus thought he could reach the East by sailing West. Uh, Columbus 
uh, was not the first one to believe that the world was round by, by any means, but he did hold to that view. And so he was able to convince uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain uh, to set sail in 1492. Uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Um, and to Columbus's death, most historians believe he uh, uh, did not uh, realize he discovered a, a new world, or he discovered what we uh, call America today, named after America Vespucci, uh, rather than uh, Columbus. It might better be titled uh, America, uh, a lot of people considered and called it, it Columbia, before we settled on uh, the name America. So this man begins his uh, study of United States history, of people, people's history, with this sentence. Arawak, men and women, naked, tawny, and full of wonder, emerged from their villages onto the island's beaches and swam out to get a closer look at the strange big boat. Actually, there were three boats, the Penta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria, which I hope you all learn still when you were in elementary school. And we all knew, those. I remember in my bedroom, uh, growing up on the south end of Terra Oak, to my brother and I, older brother Jim shared a bedroom, and, and on our wallpaper, we had the ships, the Columbus's ships all over the wallpaper, the Penta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. So this wallpaper was made to celebrate Columbus and celebrate his voyage and his uh, discovery of America. Well, Zinn admits he wants to give uh, the, the story of Columbus from the Arawak's point of view. Of course, that's difficult to do. They did not have an alphabet. They did not have a written language. Of course, there were no libraries that these people had. They were an extremely uh, primitive people. And so they're now going to encounter what we've come to call Western civilization, civilization or what used to be called Christendom, where they're gonna encounter Christian civilization uh, through Christopher Columbus. Uh, he says in the second paragraph that Columbus is the first messenger to the Americas. The name Christopher means Christ bearer. So he was bearing Christ, bearing the gospel of Christ, bearing the message of Christ uh, to the new world that he, that was, he never realized. Uh, he had found or discovered, but he was interested in converting the people of the Indies, and he, of course, called the Arawaks Indians. All right, page nine. The treatment of heroes, Columbus, and their victims, the Arawaks, 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 the quiet acceptance of conquest and murder in the name of progress is only one aspect of a certain approach to history in which the past is told from the point of view of governments, conquerors, diplomats, and leaders. And of course, Columbus includes a group of men called the conquistadors or conquerors. These were Spanish and French or excuse me, Spanish and Portuguese uh, conquerors who ended up conquering America uh, for, and much of the world at that time uh, for Spain and the Portuguese. Of course, Vasco da Gama had found a route to the Indies by sailing south into Africa around the Cape of Good Hope and uh, up into uh, India and established a trade route that way. That was uh, in 1498. Columbus's voyage was the first voyage was in 1492. And the era of the age of discovery ends in 1521. 
Why 1521? Well, that marks the death of Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan, who was Portuguese, uh, he set sail in, uh, his, uh, it was 1519, and he went uh, uh, to what we call South America today over the uh, Atlantic Ocean, or called, just called the Ocean in those days, and went through the what would be known as the Straits of Magellan at the tip of uh, South America. And uh, unfortunately, um, Magellan was killed along the way in one of the islands they stopped at in the conflict that they had with the natives of the island. And uh, Columbus's ship returned to Portugal then uh, in uh, 1522. Uh, uh, This author goes on to say, Zen, the pretense is that there is really such a thing as the United States, subject to occasional conflicts and quarrels, but fundamentally a community of people with common interest. It is as if there is really a national interest represented in the Constitution, in territorial expansion, in the laws passed by Congress, the decisions of the courts, the developments of capitalism, the cultural education, and the mass media. Of course, this consensus is being broken up by the concept of cultural relativity, by political correctness, by multiculturalism, and by uh, uh, pluralism. In uh, page um, 11, uh, he says, what Columbus did to the Arawaks of the Bahamas, Cortez did to the Aztecs of Mexico, Pizarro did to the Incas of Peru, and the English settlers of Virginia and Massachusetts to the Powhatans and the Pequots. Well, obviously his sympathies are with the savage, uh, with the uh, Indian instead of being with civilization. Uh, people object even using the term uh, um, Columbus discovered America. Uh, they want to say he had a, uh, an encounter with the Indians. Well, he discovered it. Uh, certainly, he should, uh, certainly the uh, Indians did not discover uh, the, the Indians, the natives of uh, the Bahamas, the uh, Caribbean islands where, where Columbus uh, first uh, uh, landed his, his ships. It, uh, uh, these Indian tribes, if they're so great, uh, they had not uh, sailed. Uh, they did not have the navigation, the map making skills, uh, the shipbuilding skills that the Europeans had where they could set sail and discover Portugal or discover S Spain. Of course, John Cabot is another one of the, uh, you might say, not a Spanish con conquistador, but uh, he in, uh, what, 1498, I believe, landed in uh, what we call Canada today or offshore at, at Canada for the English. But these were conquerors, a man who... Uh, and I think they did, I think they did, I, I'm thankful that they did conquer the Americas and establish this great land that we, we called America. So trash this really shouldn't, I'm reading it for the sake that it's having such an impact on, on people today. And you might want to read a, a Patriot's History of the United States. So thank you for tuning in. We're going to try to develop this program uh, uh, better. And if you have any uh, questions you might, that of issues I brought up, even using this term, Native Americans, uh, these peoples were identified by their tribes. Uh, he objects to using the term Indian. Well, we all, if we want to be technical, call them the Arawaks and the various, they have various different tribal names. The Caribs, uh, they were much more savage and fierce and warlike than the Arawaks that uh, Columbus first encountered. And 
Zinn fails to make that, uh, that decision. But they did not think of themselves as an Americans in any way. And they did not think of themselves as a, a, ra a race of people called uh, Indians. Again, they were identified by their tribes. And it wasn't that these people were living uh, peacefully together. Um, many of the uh, tribes of Indians in uh, Mexico uh, welcomed uh, uh, Cortez and, uh, and because the Aztecs were so fearsome. They were... Uh, they built their pyramids. These were places uh, of, uh, of human sacrifice. They would kill people and then roll their bodies down the, the steps of the pyramid. Uh, they were cannibals. Thank God uh, for Columbus and for the conquistadors. And we should honor these men. These are a heroic men. And we thank God for these men, that God sent them over here and our fathers eventually tamed the wild savage and, and cleared the land and, and developed into great farms and built cities and built universities and hospitals. We're so thankful for America. Amen.